Back on TYT Sports, uh, Los Angeles Times announced, I'm sorry, released a list of the dirtiest players in the NBA. What happened was LA Times pulled 24 coaches, players, and assistants anonymously. So it's a little bit of a small sample size, but uh, the results were both surprising and unsurprising. All right, JR, so Matthew Dellavedova, 13 votes of the polled 24 coaches, players, and assistants, again anonymously. Steven Adams, 7. That's Oklahoma City Thunder Center. Andrew Bogut, the Golden State Warrior Center with five. Matt Barnes, uh, the Memphis Grizzlies, ex-LA Clipper, UCLA product, forward at four. And Serge Ibaka, Serge Ibaka at two on the bottom. So uh, initial initial takes on this one. Surprise, not surprised. No, not at all. Seems Zero percent. It's, I mean, as far as the top of the list, when you get down to the bottom, you start wondering, well, actually, I would, I would have thought Matt Barnes would have landed number three. But when, whenever you see guys like that, like that we've seen Stephen Adams get into it with guys. Mm -hmm. But Della Vadova, he's one of those guys that, um, because he got a, the notoriety the way he was guarding Steph Curry last mm -hmm. year, and he kind of throws himself. So guys who, who aren't always blessed with the best physical attributes or the quickness and all that, they end up getting to where they get by being crazy, you know? And when you're crazy in basketball, sometimes you're out of control. Sometimes you're like, I can get that ball that's bouncing and has already bounced over the uh, inline, and I'm going to save it. But someone's standing right there. So you just dive. Yeah. Because diving is one of those things that we're taught in high school that if you're going to be a, a hustle player, you dive at everything. Way to be there, man. Go there. Get hustle play. Mm -hmm. Get there. Where, where? Where's the? Where's? What are those called? The not. Um, hustle the, plays the, is the way to yeah, put it. Yeah, but you're supposed to get like some floor burns on your knee. Oh, oh yeah. I want to see your knee. I, I never understood that. My coach who told us to dive on the floor and make sure that your skin is peeled up. Fuck you. You don't know what you're talking about. Don't do that. Hey, dive if you can get to the ball. Don't dive for no reason. I'm sorry. Did we get off on a, a side note? <laughs> no, no, I understand your point of diving. I feel like in Delhi's case, I don't know, maybe I'm watching the wrong, like a different from a different angle. I feel like a lot of the times he's diving after balls is a lot of the time because he's the one turning over <laughs> said balls, and like he wants to make up for the mistake. I get that. But uh, by the way, three instances that really showcase uh, Delhi's dirty play, all of which outside the the finals against the Golden State Warriors. Remember uh, Kyle Korver last year in the. Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah. Uh, Delhi was diving for a loose ball and landed right on uh, Kyle Korver, and he was a season ending injury. By the way, uh, J.R. Jackson, that is 2014 15 All Star Kyle Korver, <laughs> who's a hell of a three point shooter and one of, and one of your favorite players. Uh, and then in that same series, Kyle Korver wasn't enough to be taken out. We need to take out Al Horford, mm -hmm. too. So he like kind of wrapped his legs around his feet. That happened. And then if you remember Taj Gibson, also in the playoffs last year, uh, Taj was uh, wrapped his leg around. Oh, this I'm sorry. Taj was the one that Delhi wrapped his leg around the foot of while he was boxing him out. Yeah. So it's so easy, I think, to pick on Delhi because he's smaller than a lot, than Taj, than Al Horford, than even Kyle Korver. And I get it. He hits the deck. He dives for the balls. I take this as a little bit of a, a, it's a lot of grit, and it's part of the way that you instigate in today's game. Mm -hmm. Watch the hardwood classics. For me, even 90s basketball is hardwood classics. You watch guys like Dennis Rodman, and I think Draymond Green has a little bit of Dennis Rodman in him. Mm -hmm. They're there to instigate. And while it's never okay to purposely injure players, I think it is totally fine if you're diving after loose balls. I like that element of Della Vadova. I like that he seems like the common man's NBA player. Like, I play pickup basketball. I can be like Delhi. I can yeah. take a couple threes, dive for some balls, try to get a floater in there. Right. Yeah. I also would be a lot better at basketball if I played with LeBron James. But, you know. I, I understand. <laughs> I understand this point of view, but um, there's a reason why the common man isn't in the NBA because he's not good enough to play in the NBA. Ooh. And the only way you're gonna be in the NBA is, fired, is that's what I say. Like you know, this is this is a profession. Don't dive at people's knees and ankles no, no, and the jump knees, on them. Dive for the ball, and if you can possibly get, a, you foot see, out, you can get a foot out there, <laughs> maybe get a little kick to the knee. Like these guys have always pissed me off. I hated those guys. Like Play fine, go home. Is that yeah? It? And the things, you know, the throwback ones. You said the NBA classics, the Rodmans, and all those guys. Rodman got in your head. He talked to you, and he did little things that weren't gonna hurt you. He had hurt people, I'm sure, but. That wasn't the, the winding color of his hair. Yeah, that, that wasn't the objective. He'd get in people's heads. Black guys talked back in the day, or they'd be little nudges. Nothing that can really hurt you, but diving and 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 landing and and throwing your body weight on someone doesn't. Man, that's not play. So, in, in honorable mentions, we we're talking about mm -hmm. who we thought could have been on it. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick Beverly came to mind only because of one play, right? So, is that enough to consider someone dirty, or are we are we being unfair to Patrick? Um, 
No, well, because if he falls into this realm, okay. he's one of those guys who plays. I love guys who play defense, especially guards yeah. who play just relentless defense. That's the kind of stuff that I that I've always said. Anybody can play defense as long as you want to. Mm-hmm. So he plays great defense, but so he was doing. He this was the injury um, um, injury to Russell uh, Westbrook mm-hmm. back when it was gonna be it was gonna be a normal timeout. Right. You cross the half court, you call the timeout. You know it's coming. One of those plays when you know the timeout's coming, mm-hmm. but. Patrick Beverly decided to reach for the ball. Players have done that before. But Patrick Beverly plays at 110%, and he charged at him, took out his knee. It was season over, I think. Mm-hmm. It was So that one play, you see that, and you think, oh, dirty player. That wasn't his intention. But when you're overly trying to be uh, aggressive or hustle, that's when people get hurt. That's why I, when it doesn't matter, which it didn't in that play with Beverly and Westbrook, it doesn't matter, so now it became right. dirty. I see you on that point. I don't agree that one play is enough. I think it has to be a string of incidents mm-hmm. like as much as it's happened with Delhi. Same instance for Kelly Olenek, who ripped right. Kevin Love's shoulder out of its socket. Yeah. No, by the way, Beverly, I don't think, is a dirty player. I'm just yeah, saying exactly. stuff like that makes you so think. Exactly. So yeah. Kelly Olenek falls yeah. in that same category yeah. because I, I shouldn't say he ripped his shoulder out of a socket intentionally, but his shoulder did get ripped out of a socket, <laughs> uh, and it looked painful. And I think Olenek falls in that same category. It happened one time. It happened for one. Like, until there's a string yeah. of incidents, until there's enough evidence you claim that he's a dirty player, we cannot uh, we cannot judge you for it. <laughs> Granted, I feel like guys like Gerald Green are a little bit dirty, play with a, a thuggish uh-huh. mentality towards him, and not just Gerald Green. Matt Barnes, I mean, mm. basically, I, if I'm reading into the context correctly, uh, quote, me and Derek Fisher will cross paths in the future does not necessarily mean like, hey, bud, let's go get a, a drink and catch up over our... Our ex wife. Why are you assuming? Why are you assuming these things? I'm just. I'm not assuming. I'm um, saying no, I, I don't. Like think Matt it Barnes is. plays with an attitude. Matt Barnes plays upset, angry, and um, he's There's, that's like the, assholes. The I'm not sure physically. I'm not sure physically he's a dirty player. The he, worst he's he's guy annoying to play against. I'm is sure. He's a guy who takes all their anger out on basketball. <laughs> like they, they viciously want the crossover to hurt your feelings because <laughs> there's something going on deep down. Happens, man. Yeah. It does. Uh, there's obviously more dirty players. And by the way, uh, you mentioned Dennis Rodman getting into the head of mm-hmm. certain players. If by that you mean like throwing an elbow into the head of certain players. <laughs> like um, I said, I'm sure look, he had some physical live, things he did to guys. Here's the important thing. We live in a very different era of basketball. Uh-huh. I grew up with a very different era than you grew up uh-huh. with. Than, and you grew up with a very different era than you know, 96-year-old too. Ben Mankiewicz grew up with. <laughs> and Willis Reed fought the Lakers, right? Willis yeah. Reed beat up all of the Lakers. And, and, and our, our biggest moment was probably Ron Artest jumping yeah. into... Sorry, Meta World Peace. Sorry, Panda's friend. Probably back to Meta World Peace. Yeah. Jumping into the stands of the Malice in the Palace. Ron Artest was a dirty player for a long time. Definitely true. I mean, anybody who beats up a fan, that's a dirty player. Um, honestly, you know what? He and, dove for the fan soda. And by the way, you know what? Kobe does a lot of that stuff, but he's Kobe Bryant. That the, the, Some of the fights don't that, that Ron had with Kobe was don't. elbows happening and little shoves and nudges JR. and ribs. Like He did that stuff. JR, we don't disrespect Kobe at BYT Sports. <laughs> I made fun of his little poem, and people were very, very, very angry. <laughs> I mean, like, like really upset. Why would you make fun of his poem? It was great. I, I, I have poem. it framed. It's in who my Who throws a house. shoe? Who writes a poem? Honestly. Okay. <laughs> Comment below with who you think the dirtiest player in the NBA is today. If the poll was more than 24 anonymous coaches, players, uh, assistants, and it was over 100 or 200, do you think the results would have changed maybe more in favor of Steven Adams or Matt Barnes or even Serge Ibaka we didn't touch on? Yeah. Uh, or was, is Della Vadova easily the dirtiest player in the league? I don't think it's a terrible thing to have associated with your name if you play like Delhi. Uh, I don't think it's a terrible thing to have associated with your name if you're Matt Barnes or any of these other guys. Just don't hurt my coach, please. Derek <laughs> Fisher, stay safe. You're doing well so far. Comment below. Uh, you know, Check out the NBA playlist. We have a lot of playlists. That's a fun thing you can click on. And please go follow us on Twitter. If you follow us on Twitter, TYT Sports will follow you back this week and this week only. Wow.